But I believe the great is still yet to come. I won't stop by the name Good morning. Until I'm Welcome gone. to the 42nd Breakfast Bowl. I am your host, Bob Cardia, and to my left, to your right, the dashing Richie Stoltz. Remember um, when our, our goal was to get to seven? I know, when the goal was to get to seven. And not only that, right? Like, we're, we're at the beautiful Laurel Lake right now. If you look in the background, guys, we're moving up in the world, folks. I'm telling you now. All right, so we're now doing on location, beautiful settings, you know. Next will be Hawaii or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Who's paying? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm exaggerating, but we are on a beautiful <laughs> lake here. So. Uh, so today, we're talking about the fear of commitment. And don't worry, it's not relationship commitment, okay? That's commitment to you. <laughs> Richie's <laughs> laughing. I'm not going there. But, yeah, so the, what we're talking about in fear commitment is is with your game. Uh, or, or you can use it with life, folks. Honestly, you could. But uh, we're going to stick to primarily golf right now. Stay away from race, yeah. relationships. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. We're not a you're relationship. You're, you're, you're a fine one to talk. <laughs> yeah, but we're not a relationship podcast. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. No, God. Nor no. do we plan to be. No, no, no. no. <laughs> So anyway, with that said, <laughs> I'm going to go into our, our first uh, quote of the day. It's from Denzel Washington, actually. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. I love that. I do. Because that's, um, you know, how many players have you and I had that, that start off like a house of fire and then they just they go by the wayside? Yeah, uh, I'm a little upset, though. There's more to that quote. Well, Remember I quoted that before? Uh, you probably did. Yeah. I, yeah. I forget it right now, though. Yeah. Maybe it'll come to me. Maybe yeah. like mid podcast, I might just. Pfft, well, you know me. I'm, 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 I'm watching. Uh, I'm, I'm watching all kinds of stuff for all kinds of hours, and like I, uh, uh, yeah, I saw him. Like I loved it. So yeah. uh, there's probably more. Richie's right. He's probably, I'm probably, you know, I'm giving Denzel his credit. But there's more. Yes, correct. <laughs> so now, in terms of commitment, um, you know, a lot of people have that fear of failure, and and we always say, fail big, and, and the example. And, I, and again, this is also from Denzel's speech, but it's uh, Reggie Jackson, because I'm, I'm uh, originally from outside of New York and I'm a, I'm a Yankee fan. So growing up, I, I idolized Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. And uh, you old people only remember that the, he hit three home runs on three pitches in a World Series. It was absolutely stone cold amazing, okay? But top, top 15 home run hitter of all time, right? What else does he lead uh, Major League Baseball in? The number one. Top. Strikeouts? Yeah. Struck out almost 2,600 times. Okay. But nobody remembers that. They just remember he's one of the top 15 home run hitters of all time. And actually, if you go through, as I've done, the top uh, home run hitters of all time, almost all of them are top strikeout guys because they uppercut the ball and they have this great hand-eye coordination. So with that said, they, they say lots of people quit, um, you know, due to stress. Like, they get all stressed out when they don't get, you know, um, um, to where they want to get, especially in golf, right? Because it's a, a fine motor skill type sport. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's achievement by a thousand cuts. Uh, so it's, it's small practice, small improvement gets there. But then people say, well, it's too stressful, I quit. So Richie, first question to you. Is it, is it the stress that gets them or is it how they react to the stress? Well, it's how they react to it. And quite frankly, I think most people react to stress. Uh, not the best, let's put it that way. Um, people really struggle reacting correctly. And, you know, one of the reactions people give is they give up. And, you know, I think that's kind of where some of the stress comes from, is the fact that they don't know how to react to it. They just give up, and that's what's so stressful about it. Yeah, I, 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 there's a, a Chuck Norris quote. I don't even have that on my paper, but I remember it. The number of people that give up right before they, they get there. There's an airplane flying by. <laughs> but, uh, the number of people they give up right because they're on the precipice of succeeding. Because they, they, they feel the stress and they don't know. You don't know when the next great success is going to be. You don't know when that's going to come. So lots of people drop out right before that happens. So let me rephrase it then. So would you agree that it's typically not stress, but it, oh, I, actually, I, I, I you were you, you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. Okay, you know, it's, it's early, it's we're on lake, you know, it's all good. Quote number two. Um, uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is not actually a quote. It's, it's it's something that I've reiterated to lots of different players along the way. It's when somebody says, "Coach, I'm 100% in. You can count on me, right?" 
How many times have we heard that? <laughs> Too many? Yeah, it's what my um, dad called the bum's rush. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you hear everyone, everyone's always all in. Everyone's all in until they fail. Um, exactly. It's, it's unfortunate, but, you know, you see it all the time. And, you know, back to that first quote, you know, it's without consistency, you never finish. Yeah. So it's, you know, you got to stay consistent with it or else, you know, that I'm all in, it means nothing. And you've said it, and I'm sure you're right about to say it too, but, you know, don't tell me it, show me it. Yeah. You know, show That's me it. that you're 100% in. Don't just tell me. You can tell me anything you want. You got to show it to me or else I'm not going to believe it. Yep. And that gets back to the, the cues of the world and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I remember um, when Q didn't make the first uh, freshman year, he didn't make the conference championship team. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came to me all upset. And he's like, Coach, what do I have to do to do this? I said, well, come out here at like 7, 7.30 every Tuesday morning for the next few months, and you and I will work on it. And you know what? He did, right? He, I mean, uh, him and, 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 and Brian Mason back in the day, when I threw that challenge out at them, they accepted it. And guess what? They both meteorically got better. Yep. Now, I tell our kids on our team right now, hey, you know, you know we are here, we're, we spend lots of time with them. But if you want additional help, you know, this is where I am on Tuesdays and Thursdays, come and see me, right? Because I kind of throw it out there because I want to see who there is. Mm -hmm. And now uh, JT on our yep. team right now, JT is out there every Tuesday, Thursday night. Let me tell you what, JT's sitting like in the seven or eight spot on our team right now. You know, if he keeps up this mentality, there's there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to start creeping up on it. So I told him, I told him last time I saw him because it, uh, it kind of reminded me of what Cobb told me when I was in high school. I was the guy that stayed after practice and would just sit there and hit shots at the golf course and until my mom came and picked me up because at the time you don't have your driver's license. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember I would just sit there, hit shots, and Coach Cobb came up to me and was like, hey, you know, I just want to let you know if you keep at this pace, you're going to be the best golfer that ever played for me. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of said the same thing to JT, just watching him sit there and practice every Tuesday and Thursday while you're there. Yeah. You know, he's got his dad back behind yeah, him. Yeah, shout out to, to know, Ryan, yeah, by right? the way. His father, who's, who is, <laughs> who's a dear friend of mine, um, he's getting dad of the year, right? Yeah. And he, that man's driving up from, from Baltimore to watch his son practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I absolutely love it. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, we should all aspire to be that good yeah. as, as parents. Yeah, but no, I, I told him, you know, if you keep this up, it's you're going to be good. Yeah. You're going to be good. It's, oh, it'll be great. I yeah. mean, that's, that's the, that work for me. Now, with that said, I, I kind of beat him up a little bit yesterday as I was leaving. I'm like, you got to work on the right things. That he, is true. Yeah, he had that a drill set up yesterday that I was like, what the... I think it was a self-created drill because I can't imagine any instructor would have designed this drill, but it's okay. Um, you know, his full swings are almost as good as anybody's. Um, what he needs to work on is getting the ball in the hole. Mm -hmm. And I know that's that's tough for young people to, 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 to understand, but the game is getting the ball in the hole in the least amount of strokes. Yeah. And when you consider 60% of your shots are less than 100 yards, hmm, just saying. So we're now going to go with... Um, had to keep you committed. Uh, so we're going back with Dr. Jane Bloor. Uh, I think it's actually uh, uh, Lair, which is uh, the, the correct pronunciation, but it's L O E H R. So Don't ask I've been me. saying Lore. It's Lair. Dr. Lair, if you see this, thank you for all your insights. And um, sorry, I mispronounced your name. <laughs> um, so, by the way, do you, do you I, I know part of the answer to this because Richie's big into goals. Okay. So you tell me, I, I, I saw this on multiple things and multiple things that I've been reading lately. Do you write your goals down? Uh, I'll tell you this recently, mm -hmm. no, um, <laughs> to a fault of my own Sorry, there. Sorry, Dr. Larry. Um, <laughs> I know, I know, my apologies. But yes, I used to, and quite frankly, um, when we started the podcast, I thought this was really cool. I was writing down, you know, big goals and small goals yeah. on a just a sheet of paper. And every time we hit a small goal, I got to increase that small goal. and you know, every single time it got you closer to the big goal. Um, yeah. So yes, I am really big in writing goals down. I just, to a fault of my own, mm -hmm. um, I have not recently. Have not recently. That's I okay. know, I know, terrible, terrible for me, but I gotta be honest, I, I can't lie to them. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, I and according, according to the research, just for you to know out there, folks, <laughs> if you write goals down and frequently read them, mm -hmm. right, frequently review yes. them, uh, there is a lot, a lot to that, you know, keeping up your level of commitment. Yep. Okay. So if you have commitment issues, writing your goals down and reading them often, good, good, good. Uh, so 
Blair has a, a, a bunch of things. I mean, his books are just chock full of nuggets of, yeah. of things that you should and should not do. Um, this, basically, these are concepts or ideas to help you to keep up your, your momentum, to keep up your focus, to keep up with your commitment. Um, one, watch your eye control, okay? Uh, you know, like Eye of the Tiger from Rocky, right? The guy that has that fierce competitor look to him, absolutely. He, he, he instills a certain amount of confidence to himself. But also, the, the guy or the kid, because we work with a lot of young players, that roll their eyes, Ugh. right? That actually, the, the physical response that you get from that, uh, it, it, it goes right into, into your posture. It goes right into your whole, your, your whole, your whole, yeah. It, it, uh, so, eye of the tiger, I guess, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this, in, in golf lessons, I see it, especially with the junior kids, the junior golfers, you get some of them who, when you give them a drill to work on, you get the eye roll. Yeah. And then you get the other half, you give them a drill to work on, and they're like, I got this. Yes. And, you know, if you were to take a wild guess, which one's typically oh, yeah, the, correlation, right? the better know. golfer, um, the one that rolls their eyes, they want to go right back to the full swings all they don't want to do this stuff to get better they just want to hit the golf ball the kids that are like let's do it i got this drill i'm gonna get it you know those kids astronomically better correct the kids that that view it as a challenge as yeah. opposed to an encumbrance yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah and you see it you see it in the eyes yeah yeah for sure um two rituals now i know like this morning i was up at the crack of dawn i was sitting at the, my my uh, my table and going through ideas I know when I get up early in the morning and I'm either in stone cold silence or I have some real easy listening stuff on in the background, I am way more productive. Okay. That's a ritual that keeps me committed. Golf, pre shot routine. How important is that? Very important. I gave a full one hour lesson last year on it. One hour lesson on pre shot routine, making sure the guy's pre shot routine was drop dead perfect every single time he set up to the golf ball. Yeah. Um, I mean, as you know, it get you more comfortable over the shot, get you more confident over the shot. Um, Pre-shot routine is important. It's huge, it's, it's amazing. And, and if you time pre-shot routines for touring pros, they're always within a, a couple seconds of one, a couple of seconds of one another. Pretty, pretty neat. Uh, I like this one, pace yourself. Uh, I got a lot of type A personalities that, that, that are you know, go, 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 go. And when they hit a wall, like we had one in particular that was absolutely, uh, I thought it was a godsend the, the first few uh, first time, few times we met him, and then when things started going reversely, you could see that 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 the internal self talk started happening. Um, what I recommend to somebody who is a Type A personality is to pace yourself. You know, take a deep breath. Like not, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. I remember when I coached junior high school wrestling, we had a kid named Roman uh, that was uh, uh, on our team. And I always used to kid around with, uh, with my uh, lighter coach, Bruce Crone, uh, that uh, Roman wasn't built in a day. <laughs> so, <laughs> you got you to gotta pace yourself. I know, just, you know me. Right? Um, manage your mistakes. Do not let your mistakes manage you. So um, I'm a big, big, big guy on compound mistakes. So Richie, what, what would be a, a thing that's a compound mistake that you don't want to do? So this one, goes back to golf as, as it always does with me um, that's about the only thing I know yeah. um, when I was at Methodist that's not true he knows the, that the Cowboys rarely ever make a playoff <laughs> whoa, whoa 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 we never we oh, rarely we, 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 win we, we, in we, the playoffs we, okay, we rarely yeah. win in the playoffs forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Yeah, forgive <laughs> we compound that mistake every there single year there you go. There you go. Um, no but at Methodist the women's coach he would get so mad at the girls if they went to go hit a shot they get themselves in trouble they go to hit a shot and they put themselves in more trouble. Yeah. They he would he would rip them to shreds yep. if they did something like that because what they're doing is they're putting themselves in a bad spot and then putting themselves in another if not a worse spot yep. than they originally were and that, that right there I mean that's how you get the the eight nines tens elevens twelves like, on the scorecard. It's like eighteen on our home golf course. <laughs> the kids go for the green and two all the time. It's a narrow green over water with OB behind the green. I've seen more double, triples, and quads on that hole than I care to remember. Yeah, yeah. If you do, if you go for it and hit the water, then take your medicine. Okay, <laughs> lay it up, put it on the green. You know, walk away with a double. Uh, but but negative self-talk. Um, I saw this on on a video regarding uh, uh, tennis. But if you picture yourself mic'd up, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. mic'd up like the NFL players are, 
and, and you listen to the negative talk you feed yourself. Um, negative talk, first of all, as we know, is awful, okay? But second of all, there's rarely anything new. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I stink, I suck. Like, you think you're the first person to thought of this? No, right? You wanna minimize that and try to go with positive talk. And I know it ain't easy. Richie knows it's not easy. But you know what? You're gonna be better for if you can keep up positive talk rather, rather than negative. Number six, physiological response. Um, fake it till you make it, right? The competent fighter response. Um, anything that goes negative, try to puff out your chest, try to stand up straight and tall and convince your mind that you're succeeding. And you say, well, I mean, that's damn close to impossible, but Richie, what do studies show? Uh, I don't know what these studies show. It works. It works. Fake okay. It. I didn't know. I didn't know if there was a number you were looking no. for. Something. Fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> it you know, you should have done. You should yes, have put your shoulders back and said, "You know what, Coach? That works." <laughs> and then you'd have believed it. It does work. It does work. <laughs> yeah. It does work. I didn't know if you were looking for a specific study that no, I was no. supposed to well, know the prior Harvard to this. Study, but it's okay. That it's all I, right. Yes. I do not know off the top of my head the Harvard study, but okay. Yeah, I, I'm I'll tell you, it does work. It does work. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right. Well, which gets us to our last one, number seven right now, is enjoy what you're doing. Right? If you don't love the process of what you're doing, and guess what? Every day is not going to be great. Like, people ask me all the time, I've charted every workout I've done since 1992. Mm -hmm. Right? I work out, like, I, it's crazy. Like, I've worked out, I'm on pace to have my best workout year of all time. You know, I'm going to probably work out 340 to 350 days of the 365 day year. I've charted every single one since 1992. Now, do I love every single day I work out? Heck no. You know, if let's say, you know, you go out on a Friday night you know, with friends and, they, and you know, you get home at three o'clock in the morning and you get up the next day to work out. Um, I, 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 I hate it, but I, I convince myself I love it because I love the way it makes me feel later. And I, I think that's an important distinction that everybody should know. You're not gonna love everything at any moment, but if you fall in love with the process of improvement, that's a great thing. What do you think of that? Sorry, I gotta be honest with you. I, I know, got someone's running I got, I got on distracted. The back. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, but <clears throat> Tiger Woods, um, he loved what he, he, I think he said, when I stop loving what I'm doing, I will stop playing golf. Or something yeah. along yeah. the lines, no, that's, that's not yeah. the quote exactly, yeah, no, but that, that's, that's pretty darn close. close. Seen it. Yes. Yeah, yep. Yep. Um, you know, and I've always said the same thing too. When I stop loving playing competitive golf i'll stop playing competitive golf yeah quite frankly i'm still doing it so <laughs> you are and and, and the, the hope is that richie you know gets um the opportunities that uh, that he can get to, to, to pursue that professional career because mm -hmm. that's um that's always been amongst his top goals so those are my seven for our seven for today and in conclusion if you like what we're doing please subscribe 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 we are now like we're probably going to get over 500 by the end of the week which is the first uh, um metrics on 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 uh success on 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 youtube so if you get to 500 so we've got to 500 in, in well under a year we've got months to go before a year so uh thank you and if you get anything out of the podcast and you become rich and famous we get 10 percent. we get 10 percent. yes we do because we, we, we need the money <laughs> i need to retire baby <laughs> uh, if if you're amongst one of the first 10 to respond i love the breakfast ball you go to a hat a drawing and we send out a Starbucks gift card. So if you put in the comment section, I love the breakfast ball, much appreciated. And then don't forget, we have our online store. Um, actually, we're, uh, I, I ordered some stuff today. So we're gonna be picking up stuff later today. So hopefully next week when I'm on the podcast, you'll be seeing some breakfast ball attire. And as I always say, I am your host, Bob Cardia. To my left, the dashing Richie Stoltz. To your right, Richie Stoltz, absolutely. All right, guys, have a great week. We look forward to talking to you next Monday. Suburban ha ha My bourbon ha ha My 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 bourbon ha ha